I feel like some of you are going to click out of this video once you hear what I'm about to say but I had another woman on the team and I felt like the woman should have been more understanding. The female employee that was one of the first people to start Uber was literally sexually harassed. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the channel, Susan here, and I'm so excited to have you here. We're going to be talking about the five skills that every female programmer should have. Now, obviously this is not only for female programmers, but this is specific to women because we have particular attributes, I would say, that are more common among women so um if you're a guy you want to watch this feel free to watch it um but this is for my ladies out there i feel like right now no one talks about these things i guess that's because we don't have a lot of female programmers there's a disclaimer here and the disclaimer is that not, is that this is not a video to rant about why there are not a lot of women in tech because the logical explanation for that is because you have a lot of more men applying to tech roles and so there is a tendency to have more men working in tech. What we're talking about today are those skills that women need to be able to embrace more while in a tech career. This video might apply a bit more to people that are, you know, software engineers or maybe PMs or people that are very, very, very close to the software development process. Okay, so if you're a QA, for example, this is a video that is useful to you. There's a lot of important things that I'm going to be saying on this video today that I, I promise you're going to find very relatable and useful you know in your career the first thing i want to talk about is confidence building the truth is that a lot of us have had a fair share of having a lot of good ideas and maybe you found yourself in a solution in a situation where you had a really great idea and you were contemplating whether you should say it or not you know you were like oh my goodness maybe it's not that great maybe i'm the only one thinking like this and then five seconds later someone else on the team says it and then you're like oh my goodness why didn't i just say it like that was exactly what i wanted to say so the reason for this is because for women a lot of us are like very passive and very introspective we are more receptive we are not like as outspoken sometimes I'm not saying that there are not women that are like this but I'm just saying that for a very high number of people especially for me people that I've worked with I've noticed that a lot of ladies are quite laid back when it comes to you know being a software developer working in tech in general so this is something that we have to be very be very proactive about building to be able to share ideas to, be able to share thoughts share solutions without feeling like they are inferior there's a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt I hope I'm pronouncing that right I think that's her name that says no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And there's another quote by Vincent Van Gogh that says, if you hear a voice within you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint and that voice will be silenced. So the reality is that you will most likely not find a situation where someone is like giving you that boost in confidence to be able to assert yourself more or to be able to make decisions without second guessing them more, you know, and things like that. It's something that you would need to be able to learn how to do for yourself unfortunately <laughs> and even though you might find yourself in enabling environments or maybe in a workspace where you are able to be given room to share your thoughts for me personally i have been fortunate enough to find myself in an environment where my voice has not been stifled in any way this is not to say i've not had my fair share of you know tough times in tech i certainly have especially at the beginning of my career but i've never found myself in a place where i felt intimidated because I'm a woman and I know that this is not the story for many people if you go through reddit you'll see a lot of people having experiences where you know they feel victimized or intimidated because they are probably the only woman in their team or whatever so this is not to invalidate that experience but the bottom line of what I'm trying to say is that you can't wait for your environment to be enabling to have that confidence in yourself in your abilities and in the things that you know you can do and the things that you've been able to prove to yourself that you can do over time like i mean you probably got a job after months of preparation you probably have been in situations where you have been able to fix a bug unsupported even if you were supported you've been in situations where you probably didn't think you could do something and it turned out that you could do it always keep this in mind and that's why it's very important to document 
your wins, document the things that you were able to do, so that by the time you look back at this, you know that, hey, I did that, I did that, I did that, and that gives you confidence to be able to do more stuff. What I'm saying is, you might find yourself in a situation where you have an enabling environment that helps you share your ideas. You might find yourself where you are not, but you need to take ownership of being able to build your confidence as a woman in tech or as a female programmer so that you make the best out of your career. The other things that would definitely give you a confidence boost is, like I said, documenting your wins, continuous learning, like always trying to stay updated with whatever is going on in your space, leaving room for growth as well, not running away from a challenge. Like if you're asked to build something and it looks like you're not going to be able to do it, attempt to do it. Try to at least make some efforts to try to do it on your own. Try to get help from the internet. Try to do it yourself. Like don't run away from a challenge. Those are the things that build up your confidence ultimately. So there is a free ebook I created called um, How to Speak Up in Tech as a Woman. And I feel like if you're watching this, this is probably helpful for you because I wasn't always able to just up and speak in my team. Like there was a time where I really struggled with being able to do that confidently. And in this ebook, I basically share how, you know, the struggles I had and how I was able to deal with it, the things that I did like specifically. And I believe that this will help you. It's a free ebook. The link is in the description. So you can check that out to see what my experience was like. And hopefully it helps you. So the second thing is communication. The reality is that, like I mentioned before, part of our makeup as women is to be more passive, more receptive. There are certainly a lot of women that are, you know, more outspoken. More often than not, you find that women are more passive and more calm and more observant. And sometimes we, in fact, most of the time, if you are in a tech career, especially if you probably have progressed beyond being a junior developer, you need to be able to contribute on your team. I dare say that the most important skill that you need outside your technical skill is your communication because your communication can make a whole lot of difference. If you're trying to build a software solution to a business requirement, right, you absolutely need to understand what the problem is or what, what the overall objective is of this project before creating a solution for it. You cannot have half understanding of a requirement and then go ahead and solve because you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're going to have to write that solution again if you did not understand the problem. Another use of communication is, for example, negotiating your salary. You need to be able to explain why you are worth this particular amount. Properly communicate what you've done for the team. If you're joining a, or if you're in a new job or if you're trying to get a new offer, what you have done in the past, what your experience has been, these are not things that you can just assume that from your LinkedIn profile, they're probably going to know. They might have an idea, but you also need to go the extra mile to be able to accurately explain and extensively make whoever is involved understand why you deserve this or you deserve that. Also in like things like code review, you need to clarify stuff on your team. You need to explain to someone why they should be writing the code in a particular way you know, and not in another way, maybe to optimize the solution or to make sure the solution, you know, the performance is great. Things like that are things that require you to be able to communicate well, both verbally and in written formats. Communication is super important for you as a female engineer. You have to put aside that part of you that is passive and that part of you that would prefer not to speak. You have to sometimes put it aside and learn to communicate well. So that's a second skill that I believe is very important for the female engineer. Engineer. The third skill that I believe and I feel like some of you are going to click out of this video once you hear what I'm about to say, but please hear me out. I try to see where I'm coming from with this. Third skill that I feel that is very important is doing away with the victim mentality. Let's be honest, there are a lot of situations where because you are the minority, there is a high tendency for you to be defensive. Two things are likely to happen in a space where you are the minority. You'll find that there is a clicky behavior. This is a human behavior. This is not a mountain. thing. you find that there's a clicky behavior when you have a lot of people that share the same ideas and the same way they reason and stuff. you find that they tend to be closer to one another 
And sometimes they can make you feel isolated. While the person that is on the receiving end of this is likely to be um, is likely to be defensive. So any single action, whether it's genuine or not, is going to come across as I'm being victimized or I feel like I'm being intimidated just because you don't necessarily feel among. As a woman in tech or as a female programmer, try as much as possible to look at things objectively. There are certainly cases where people are victimized because they are women in spaces. But you also have to understand that there are a lot of situations where that is not the case, where someone is giving you feedback because it is genuine feedback. So instead of you focusing on why the person is giving you the feedback or if the person would give another guy the feedback, focus more on what you can make, what you can take out of this. Especially if you're a junior. If you're a junior developer, you should be trying to absorb as much as possible. You should be trying to learn as much as possible. I, I would always say this in most of my videos when I was a junior developer I I was lucky I, I guess it was a combination of two things right I was on a team where I was working with engineers that had worked with Facebook or that had, that had worked with the initial part of Facebook for years I'm talking over 10 years like probably close to 20 years right and so they were always quick to spot potential bugs code quality issues right you drop one small PR and you see all these comments like I would sometimes see all these comments I was probably my first year of coding then or second year and I would sometimes I used to feel really bad for me I had another woman on the team and I felt like the woman should have been more understanding I don't know why I felt like that but hey Maybe I was just not used to that. So I felt like she should have more more understanding of, you know, hey, she's a girl, she does get into coding, but she did not take it easy with me. Like she was quite intense. If she sees anything wrong with my code, she's gonna call it out, she's going to be like, you should not be writing this, you should not be doing this. And even though it wasn't the best, the, the, the feedback did not come in the best way, I had to grow from it. I had to walk through it. I had to look through the feedback and see what I could make from it, what I could learn from it. So that's one thing that I believe um, female engineers should be doing, especially if you want to be good at what you do. You cannot always be caught up in acting the victim. Please hear me, hear what I'm saying here. I'm not trying to invalidate people's experiences that people don't go through being victimized. I don't know how many of you have seen the story of Uber. The female employee that was one of the first people to start Uber was literally sexually harassed in the company. So much so that she tried her best to try to see if she could get past it, but it just wasn't possible. So I know that there are certainly issues that women have in some spaces, and I'm not minimizing that by any means. Please, if you find yourself in such issues or in such spaces, try your best to leave that place. Obviously, they need to grow up, they need to act better, they need to do better, but you sometimes might be better off leaving that space. That said, try as much as possible to see how you can get value out of feedback that is given to you whether it is constructive feedback or it's not now the fourth thing is having allies and the, this is an important skill because as humans we certainly need to be able to build relationships it doesn't matter whether you work in tech or not our needs are almost the same we need companionship we need to have relationships around us so how it's useful in your tech career is when you're able to build relationships with people when you're able to have allies you are able to you know for example talk through ideas without necessarily having friction because you don't see eye to eye with the person normally. If you have a good relationship with your colleagues, when you are trying to explain a reason or a solution or a potential contribution that you have to the team, you will tend to have less pushback if you have allies on the team. It's potentially for the benefit of you, you know, having a good time on the team or enjoying the team you work with when you have a good relationship with your teammates. And I've certainly been in spaces where I don't exactly agree with everybody's um, approach to doing things on the team but it doesn't necessarily mean I have to be enemies with them I just need to be able to understand how they work and have them understand how I work and then we find a common ground we find a balance some way we don't have to be best buddies but we need to at least once in a while be able to make small talk be able to you know show genuine care about them and just keep things moving so I think that it is very important to be able to create some sort of healthy relationship with 
your colleagues on the team. Now the final one that I'm going to say, and this is super, super, super important, and naturally, as women, we, try, we, we tend to shy away from this. And this is self-promotion without shame. And the reason why this can be very annoying to do is because as women, we like to move in silence. We like to do things, we like to do our work and let our work speak for itself. We don't like to like blow our trumpets and be like, oh, I did all of this, I did that. You know, we want it to be like, oh, she did that, oh my goodness. We want people to find out about your work like all of a sudden without you having to say a word. I know, I know that feeling. But the reality is that in the tech career, and I'm sure that this applies to a lot of other careers as well, you need to be able to state the importance of the work that you do, okay? So this could be in form of demos, this could be in form of your like status updates, you know, when you're giving an update and maybe you spent hours on a bulb, you need to communicate that this was a hard not to chew or <laughs> this was a hard like pill to swallow or whatever. I'm, I feel like I'm using the wrong um, figures of speech here but like you need to be able to communicate that you had to put in a lot of effort to get whatever it needed to be you know done done okay so you need to communicate what what you're working on does don't just expect people to assume that or don't expect that people will eventually use the tool and they will know how it works no if you went through the pain of building something you need to go through the pain of explaining what it does you know go through the pain of talking through or oh, how i was able to do this i was able to build this such that when users visit this page they are able to easily get access to the page their performance has improved by like 65 percent they are able to get an error message immediately they visit this page if they cannot access it if they are not authorized to visit this page you're able to see some sort of user-friendly notification on the screen that they don't have the rights to see this page like things like that are things that you need to be able to clearly state and this is where communication also comes in so don't expect don't think that you are doing the wrong thing by self-promoting and this is an example i like to use imagine you build a product or you build a service that can save a billion lives okay but people don't know how to use it you're the only one that literally knows how this thing works you are going to do your best in educating whoever needs to know what this tool does okay you're not going to assume that oh when it gets into their hands they're going to figure it out absolutely not you're going to make sure that you properly you know help them see oh this is what you should be using this tool for in fact if possible you will tell them how the tool currently works what the version 2 of the tool potentially will do okay because you need to sell the tool to them you need to sell the product to them and that's what you do when you in quote self-promote and i feel like self-promote is a cringy word to use but unfortunately it's just one of the things that needs to be done needs to be done and i feel like when you look at it from that perspective of if i don't explain or you know communicate what my effort is doing or what my work is doing i am not going to um present myself as a valuable member of the team I'm going to be undermining by myself the work that I'm doing. So you need to look at it from that perspective that even though this is a cringe thing to do, it's something I have to do, you know, to show the worth and the value that I'm providing to the team. I hope that this video has been useful to you. Don't forget to check out my free course on how to speak up in meetings as a woman in tech. Um, or as a female programmer this is going to be very useful for you um check it out as a free course you don't need to pay just uh, check the link in the description i hope this video has been useful to you please subscribe if you're yet to if you are a female developer and you have struggles in tech or you have some things that you currently deal with and you don't know how to navigate put it in the comments if there's a particular issue that you have been able to get past as a female developer please put in comments i'm interested to know and i'm interested to help you to the best of my ability thank you again for watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.